Join me on my favorite 15 minute post run stretch routine. We're going to cover the entire lower body. So we're going to stretch the hip flexor, quad, inner thigh, the glute, the hamstring, and the calf. We're going to do five different stretches, each for 30 seconds on both sides for a total of three rounds. This is going to take you 15 minutes. Follow along with me for tips. Lying on your back, you're gonna cross your right leg over your left. You're going to interlace your hands behind your left leg, pull your left leg in toward your chest. Now, the thing though that I want you to focus on is creating an, creating an arch in your back. You're gonna get a little bit more of a stretch through that lower back. So if you're um, in through that glute area, if you are lifting up your head, I want you to try to rest your head down as much as you can. I'm going to kind of try to focus on pushing that knee out to the side, but not too much. Switch sides. So you're gonna cross your left leg over your right. You're gonna interlace your hands behind your right leg. You're gonna to try to create that little arch in your lower back. This is what's going to really challenge some of that flexibility um, in, the, um, in the back of the leg. You should be feeling this in your glute. This figure four stretch is really great for imp improving the movement of your pelvis, helps with low back pain and also hip pain. Next up, we're gonna do the bretzel stretch. So I'm gonna lie on my right side. I'm gonna bring my right knee behind me. My left leg is crossed over at 90 degrees. I'm gonna grab with my left hand the top of my right foot, and I'm gonna pull my leg back and my heel toward my bottom. Then if you can, you're gonna turn a little bit to get a little bit more of a stretch. The biggest thing you wanna focus on is making sure your knee stays behind your hip and squeeze that glute. And now switch sides. So I'm lying on my left side, my left knee is bent, my right knee is up at the level of my hip, so I'm in a 90, degree, um, 90 degrees at my knee and hip. Then with that left leg, I'm pulling that left hip, that left knee behind my hip, I'm squeezing my glute, trying to, peel, trying to pull my left heel toward my glute. You should be feeling this stretch to the front of the leg. Good, and then we're gonna do a hamstring and um, calf stretch. This is gonna look like a down dog kind of stretch. So I'm pushing back. So I have all my weight on my right leg. My heel is pushing down toward, toward the bottom. Then my left, um, my left foot is just hooking behind my right heel. I'm really trying to push this hip back as best I can to get a little bit more of a stretch. And I'm pushing my hands away from the front of my mat. And then switch sides. You might find that one side is a little bit tighter than the other, that's totally normal. The thing that I'm really focusing on is trying to create an arch in my back. If I create an arch in my back, I'm gonna get a little bit more of a stretch through that glute, hamstring, and calf. I'm also making sure that my toes are pointing forward that whole time. I really need to think about pressing through my hands to get a little bit more of a stretch, so I'm pushing my hips back. Then we're gonna do lizard stretch, so you're starting on all fours. Bring your right foot to the outside of your right hand, walk your left foot back, and lift that leg up. Now, the thing that I'm focusing on is pushing my right knee to the outside. So I'm really trying to separate the front, the, the front leg and the back leg as best I can, I'm trying to keep my middle back flat as well. Go to the you're gonna switch sides. You can come back down on all fours, bring your left foot to the outside of the left hand, and then walk that foot back. So the thing is that a lot of times people's foot isn't their foot isn't necessarily on the outside of their left hand. You really want to try to do that, and you want to try to sink that front leg, that front hip down a little bit more. And you want to try to keep your back flat. Good, and come on down. Now we're gonna do a butterfly stretch. I'll show you guys from the front first, but then we're gonna switch. This is the, the final stretch. So my feet are together. I'm trying to roll forward on my pelvis as best I can. I'm pushing my heels and my feet together. I'm taking my, my hands across the tops of my toes, but I'm not pulling my, my toes in toward me. I'm trying to come and sit as far forward as I possibly can. You can see this right leg definitely needs a little bit of work here. So I'm really trying to push 
my feet together and I'm trying to bring these knees down, but more than anything, I'm actually really trying to focus on, I'll show you from the side. I'm really trying to focus on creating an arch through my back. If I create an arch through my back, I'm gonna get a lot more of a stretch. This is really helpful for the front of the inner thigh, as opposed to the lizard is a little more helpful for the back of the inner thigh. Good, and we're gonna go back down to that figure four stretch. So lying on your back, you're gonna cross your right leg over your left, interlace your hands behind your left leg. Now try to focus on that arch. So if I place my hand underneath my lower back, I feel a little bit of a space in between there. That's what's gonna help with facilitating that stretch. You don't necessarily have to focus on really pushing that knee out to the side, as long as you're trying to get that arch to the lower back. Good, and switch sides. The other thing is that I'm making sure that um, I'm above that ankle bone when I cross that leg and I'm trying to not let my foot turn in. I'm really trying to arch my back and I'm trying to keep my lower leg, my shin, parallel to the ground as well. You might be able to pull that leg in a little bit more. In eight seconds, we're gonna transition to that pretzel stretch, that hip flexor stretch. Good, and switch, um, and switch to the pretzel. So I'm lying on my left side. My right knee is up at the level of my hip. I'm gonna grab the top of my left foot with my, um, with my right hand. I'm really trying to, um, in this case, what I wanna do is I actually wanna try to tuck my pelvis. So in the other ones, we were trying to arch our back. Now, because we're stretching the front of the leg, I really wanna actually create a little bit of a tuck. That's what's gonna be helpful for making sure that I'm getting a little bit more of a stretch. And switch sides. So now I'm lying on my right side. Squeeze that glute, bring the heel toward the bottom as much as you can. And really try to make sure that that knee is behind where the hip is. That's what's gonna help you to get a little bit more of a stretch as well. In five seconds, we're doing that down dog stretch. Good, and come on up, down dog stretch. So I really need to think about when I go to push back, I'm really trying to push my hips back as much as I can and then go to straighten that knee. So first I have this knee bent, I push my hips back and then I straighten my knee. That's what's gonna make sure that your pelvis is in a really good position. Because what happens sometimes is people kind of round a little bit. So I really wanna make sure that I'm bending at my hips and switch sides. So again, you can do that same thing. Bend your knees, push your hips back and then straighten your knee. There you're gonna be able to get a little bit more of a stretch. The other thing that I'm really trying to think about doing is pushing my hands away. And then also just to kind of work on a little bit of some of that shoulder stability. I want you guys to try to point your elbows. Um, I want you to try to point your biceps up. Good. And now we're doing the lizard stretch. So my right foot is to the outside of my right hand. I'm going to walk that left foot back and straighten that knee. You can keep this knee down if you want. I really want you guys to focus on, um, on arching through that middle back area, making sure that that's flat and then come on up. Good, and switch sides. One thing you can do with this lizard stretch is you can kind of push that knee to the outside a little bit more. You might feel that stretching a little bit. Sometimes people even come on the outer edge of their foot, but what I really want you guys to think about is like this front leg, this hip is sinking down toward the ground. Go ahead and straighten that knee if you can. Good, and now butterfly stretch. I'll show you guys from the side. So my feet are together and you see how I kind of like push myself forward a little bit, try to arch my back and then I sit my, sit my pelvis down. Then I take my feet and I'm really pushing my feet together as best I can. So my whole foot, so pinky edge side of my foot, my big toe, my heel, that's all pressing together. 
and then I'm thinking about rocking forward on my pelvis, trying to stay as upright as I can. So you notice that my like middle back is pretty flat. So then like that's what's pulling me forward. I'm not doing this motion because remember it's important to strengthen in a functional position. This is much more functional. In 10 seconds, we're done with this stretch. This you should really feel through that inner thigh area. It's like the most meaty part of your lower leg. All right, last time, figure four stretch. Sometimes the reason why we're doing all of these glute, glute and hamstring and adductor, like inner thigh stretches, is because like that, especially that adductor area, that creates the majority of the mass of your leg. And especially as a runner, you use your adductors as hip flexors and hip extensors. So they're just used really frequently. They're really helpful for generating power. So if you're going up hills, you're gonna use them a lot, but they're also hard to stretch. Switch sides. So that's why we need to kind of get them at all these different, um, all these different angles because it just, there's a lot of it. It's not as simple as just kind of saying like, oh, I'm just gonna do this one butterfly stretch or just this lizard stretch. We kind of need to approach it from all angles. A lot of times too, people think they have hamstring pain, but it's actually their adductors. That's really common, actually. It's one of the most common things I treat actually for, for runners. Good, and now bretzel. So last time I'm lying on my left side. I'm gonna bring, I kind of walk that, that knee back before I even bend it. Then I bring my heel toward my bottom. I squeeze that glute as best I can. I tend to over arch my back. So I'm really trying to focus on making sure that that stays flat. So I need to kind of like tuck my pelvis a little bit. And then you can turn open. Good, and switch sides. So now I'm lying on this left side, I'm sorry, on my right side, bending that knee, squeezing that glute. I really have to walk that knee behind where my hip is. Trying to keep the back of my neck long too, like my chin will kind of start to come up, but I'm really trying to keep that whole area long. Good, nice job guys. Good, and then last time, down dog stretch. So I'm going to push my hips back, bring that heel back toward me, down toward the ground. I'm really also trying to think about, it's like I'm trying to push this whole femur back. So I'm placing my hand kind of right on where my hip crease would be. So I'm really trying to push that part back as much as I can. That's just gonna allow me to get a little bit more of a stretch and switch sides. So I like to bend my knees, push my hips back as much as I can, and then straighten my leg. So like here, I'm really challenging some of that flexibility. I, I even feel this in through my glute because I'm really trying to get that femur head to go back. And that's what's gonna stretch um, deep inside that glute area too. Just gonna reinforce everything else that we were doing. Good, and now lizard. So right foot to the outside right hand. And now I'm really gonna try to extend that hip. And then I'm gonna even kind of rock on the outside of my foot and try to like kind of push that knee out a little bit more. So this, this part of my femur, this top part, the thigh bone is coming down toward the ground but without arching my back. Good, and switch sides. So now my left foot is it to the outside of my left hand. And you know, guys, you're gonna find that one side feels really different than the other. And that's why we're doing all these single side stretches is because then you can kind of isolate like, oh, okay. You know, my left lizard feels a lot tighter, but then it's like my right calf in that down dog stretch the whole idea. Three seconds. Good. Last time butterfly stretch. So you're going to try to sit as upright as you can, walking myself forward, clasp those hands around the feet, and then I'm going to use that. I have my elbows slightly bent. I'm going to kind of pull myself forward. The other thing you guys can do 
is that if this is really tight, you can sit up on something. So you notice like if I were sitting up on say a blanket or something like that, then it's gonna be a little bit easier for me to roll my pelvis forward. Remember, that's what we're trying to do is that I'm trying to get this front part of the pelvis to like tilt down and I have like a slight arch in my back. You'll feel that stretching. And I'm really trying to push my heels together to like kind of push my knees out. I'm really trying to push them out as opposed to down. Good, just a few more seconds. Good, and rest. Nice job, guys. Thanks for joining me today. This is my favorite post-run stretch routine to really work out all of the kinks um, from running to make sure that I'm ready for the next run. Like and share this with a fellow runner so you guys can all stay um, healthy and injury-free.